Namaskar, Makrishika. Namaskar, Ines. I have a question that concerns one part of my life in which I feel uh, most um, confused and like, I would say it's a failure, and this is raising my children. I feel like this neoliberal education is creating little egoistic monsters more and more, and I'm fighting very hard to find the right balance between discipline and affection, and I'm not sure how to do the best thing to kind of help my children go on the right track. And I'm really fascinated with older cultures like India, uh, where there is still a lot of respect and bowing towards parents, uh, for example, which is something I cannot really imagine how to explain to my children. The biggest challenge is the technology that I also have to kind of fight with in trying to limit it and not really succeeding. Ines, it's a very big question because the, the, the whole thing is, is rotten from bottom up. Today the world is, is a different place. America is everywhere, India is everywhere. And one of the big issues I've seen that causes a lot of the problem, especially with smaller children, and it sounds very banal, but it is bigger than it sounds, and that is the whole problem with sugar because these children have that much sugar in their systems that they are incapable of navigating the normal expected social rules anymore. That sugar just makes them crazy. So the first thing which is absolutely indispensable is to reduce that sugar, if not take it away entirely. And that makes for an immediate change in the mood, it takes a couple of days for the de-addiction process to set in and that changes things very fast. Of course, it is very hard to be tough about certain things, but once you take a moment to be with yourself and center yourself, the strength you get to draw those lines and to and to ensure that those lines are not crossed, comes from the source, it comes from the soul, it comes from your own state of surrenderedness. And when I listen to your voice asking this question, there's a wavering in there which is entirely understandable if you have to raise children in this so-called neoliberal uh, world, which is, which is reaching frightening dimensions of, of insanity, then you have to counteract that with an equal amount of sanity. And that comes through this process of centering. So first thing is, you center yourself, put that oxygen mask on your face first. And that really, really will make a difference in the household. And if within the framework of a, of a one and a half hour satsang, I have to say something, I would say, cut the sugar immediately, everywhere, as much as possible. And presence, 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 presence with the child. As much as possible, spending time with the children, physical time. It can be challenging, obviously, because most of the kids today are under such pressure from all the things they consume and what they eat. But that's what you can do to be centered and to spend time with them. Literally be present. That can change a lot within a very short time. There are, of course, a lot of other things which need to be looked at, like what kind of a school they go to or what is actually being taught in those schools, because as you've probably faced yourself, that, that entire downfall of the educational system uh, especially in the in the United States, and then from there out into the rest of the world, has reached insane proportions. And and the psychologizing of everything and the despiritualizing of everything has to be counteracted. And it's counteracted by you starting with yourself. One can't adopt a top-down position with children. One has to start with oneself. If the parent is not in surrender, the child is not going to be in surrender. And surrender means not to give in to the desires, demands, yearnings, hopings, wantings, and pushings of the ego. That will also give you that strength. So, start with these two things, yes. 
Thank you so much. You answered even the questions that I didn't have the time to ask. Thank you so much. Namaskar, Mavishika. Namaskar, Karin. This is a follow-up question to what Ines had asked about parents being present with the kids. I'm becoming aware of the attempts, actually, that are being taken up by society or even on political levels to split parents from their children. What can I, as a parent, do with that very strong attempt of keeping me away from the child? It's very interesting what is happening where greedy capital is spreading. It's greedy capital I'm speaking about, not capital. It's greedy capital. There's a difference. And wherever greedy capital starts to spread its tentacles, it converts that society into a sort of communist society where the where the mothers are sucked into the workforce, thereby keeping them away from their children. And that results in that entire society being undermined from bottom up. And then they move to the next area of the world and the next greedy capital just keeps on moving and, and fundamentally sucking children away from their parents. That's what it finally boils down to. And that results a generation later in the decline of that society or a couple of generations down the road. This is what has been observed. And in fact, the way that uh, all of this can be can be battled, is not a top-down way, because, you know, who is the enemy? It's an unseen enemy. The thing is that if from bottom up, from in your own household, you understand those, those machinations, you can, you can start with simple things like standing up for the rights of your children, and not their rights to change their gender, but their rights to be protected and to be in protected environments. For example, they sent children on week-long camps from the age of 10 or 11 or 12, and they'll have one or two camp managers, and you have girls and boys there, and if they mingle with each other, it's one thing. But who is there to ensure that that child is protected from those camp managers? I'm not saying all of them are, are dangerous, but children have to be protected 24 hours. It may be considered extreme, but at least 60% of the people who have come to me over the last 20 years, who are spiritual seekers, have in some way or the other been abused, or actually even worse than that, sexually by an adult who was known to them. One can turn that around and say, well, then those are the, the crazy people coming to you. No, that's not the case, because it's it's far spread in general in the population. We have to protect our children from that one thing, because that's something we can protect them against, apart from all the other things which have been spoken about. So, how to stand up? It means stand up, even if it means a late night, writing those letters, refusing, saying no, I won't allow my child to be exposed to danger, which I can prevent. You can't maybe prevent a child from tripping or falling off their bike or whatever it is, but you can prevent them from being sexually molested. And this is something that wounds them for the rest of their lives. This is just one of the things I'm pointing to. It's about protecting that child right from when they're sent to where they're taken care of when the mothers have to go to work. Why do those mothers have to go to work? Because they've been enticed into the workforce away from their children. They can also go to work when their children are 10 years old, but no, the career is pushed and pushed and pushed to be far more important than raising those children, which is actually the most fulfilling work that a woman can do if she, if she gives into it and if society allows her to give into it. So it's this fourth wave of feminism that, that I often speak about, which is stoop to conquer, bend down and conquer this madness that is, that is 
sucking children away from their mothers, that Pied Piper. You can start with standing up when your children are put into situations which are unsafe for them. The schools, the system has to prove to you that that safety is guaranteed. You have the right as a parent to push that through. And even in America, where the schools are controlled by bureaucrats, it is still possible to push that through. Quietly, without shouting, without screaming, feeling the power of the Antar Guru, of the Antar Atman, that is the, the source of your energy and strength. It is not a conceptual source, it is something which is larger and greater than yourself, and it is within. That's where you go to gain that strength. And you start at home, you start with your children. Social change, top down, rarely ever works. It's from bottom up that it works. Yes. Thank you. Namaskar, Marishika Ji. Namaskar.